Thank you for joining me in the History of Science Collections of the University of Oklahoma Libraries. Let's look at a few treasures from, from the vault that will introduce Pythagoras and Plato. What is nature? How is nature known? Is nature fundamentally mathematical or musical? In the metaphysics, Aristotle expressed bewilderment at the Pythagoreans teaching that the whole heavens are a musical scale and a fabric of numbers. Aristotle confessed that he could understand what is meant by a number of things, but he was not sure what the Pythagoreans meant by a thing of numbers. For the Pythagoreans, all of nature is a musical scale, and only through mathematics can nature be known. Because of the Pythagorean legacy, the field of mathematics encompassed music. This two-volume, 17th-century treatise on music by Athanasius Kircher shows a mechanical harpsichord. As the water falls upon the small wheel, it turns the musical cylinder, which depresses the keys of the harpsichord. But at the same time, the cylinder animates the blacksmiths, who are shown pounding their hammers onto the anvil. And this is a reference to the ancient Pythagorean story, that when Pythagoras was walking by the blacksmith's shop, he realized that the musical scale would result from the harmonies of simple whole number ratios. These are the five regular solids of the Pythagoreans. The tetrahedron, four sides. The cube, six sides. The octahedron, eight sides the dodecahedron, 12 sides, and the icosahedron, 20 sides. In each regular solid, every face and angle are identical. Six squares in the case of a cube, four triangles in the case of a tetrahedron. The Pythagoreans proved that there can be five and only five regular solids, that it is impossible for there to be another yet undiscovered. In a dialogue titled The Timaeus, Plato constructed the universe from these regular solids, showing how nature could be understood as built up from the properties of numbers in a geometrical atomism. In this way, the Pythagoreans and Plato were the first particle physicists. This early edition of Plato's works, published in 1491, was edited by Marsilio Ficino the leading Plato scholar of the Italian Renaissance. It includes Ficino's own essays on theology and Platonic love. The Oklahoma copy is annotated with contemporary marginal glosses. Annotations add to the research interest of a book and throw light on how a book has been understood by its early readers. Each page of this monumental Etienne edition of Plato, published in two large folio volumes, displays Latin and Greek texts of Plato side by side. Scholars who refer to Plato today still use the page numbering of this edition, the first complete edition of Plato's works. Mundus Subterraneus, The Subterranean World by Athanasius Kircher, illustrates Plato's theory of the earth. In addition to describing the submerging of the lost continent of Atlantis due to collapse of the earth's crust, Plato suggested that the waters of the ocean find openings at the poles to enter the interior of the earth, known as Tartarus. The idea of sailing into the interior regions of the earth through these polar openings continued to attract adherents up through the 19th century when it was endorsed by Jules Verne and Edgar Allan Poe, among others. Wherever one finds an emphasis upon mathematical demonstrations in science, one may credit Plato and the Pythagoreans. Alfred North Whitehead wrote that the history of philosophy is a series of footnotes to Plato. One might say the same about science. Science is a story. What stories do you want to hear and tell about Pythagoras and Plato?